Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all good. Today is my birthday! <laughs> I've got a big book haul to do. I can't even hold all these books up. This isn't even all, I can't, oh no, I'm about to. Don't fall, please. I've been super lucky and you guys have sent me loads of stuff, loads of books for my birthday. And we're gonna unbox them all and open them all together. So I'm so excited to get into this. Thank you for all the birthday wishes and love. And it's just been amazing. There was a video made by some booktubers and by my friend Nicole wishing me happy birthday and I just feel so lucky today and I can't wait to open all of these books. I don't know what ones to start with so we're just gonna grab them and see what happens. <gasps> Ooh! Okay, who are these from? These are from Claire and she has sent me two romance books actually that I had on my wish list which are Spoiler Alert by Olivia Dade and Get a Life Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert. Me too Claire. If you watch my channel, you know I don't tend to read a ton of romance, but one of my goals this year was to read more. These are the two that I had on my list. Everyone says to read Talia Hibbert, and I know this is like a series that we follow sisters, so this is Chloe Brown. This one, wait, I know what this one's about. Hang on, wait. It's almost hurtful to me to watch her be so dumb. Oh. This is between like a famous guy from TV and like a plus size Instagrammer. I feel like, I don't really know, but I've heard a lot of great things about this one. I'm just hoping to get more into romance this year. And these seem like good places to start. So thank you so much, Claire. Let's go for this one next. <gasps> Okay, so this is from Darian. Thank you so much. This, oh my god, ah! This is Summer of Salt by Katrina Leno. I am so excited. <laughs> Recently, I read You Must Not Miss by Katrina Leno and like, I was straight away obsessed. Like, I loved it so much. It's one of my favorite books of last year. I read it right at the end. It was just like this perfect story of revenge and anger, like anger within a girl. It just made me straight away want to read everything Katrina Leno has written and will ever write. I believe this is like a sapphic romance by the sea. I could be wrong on that front, but I'm pretty sure that's right. Oh my God, I am so excited. I've also heard this is sad. Am I right in saying that? Like, I feel like I've heard a lot of people say it makes them cry a lot. And it's actually really short as well, which we always love to see. We always love to see a short, quick book. I'm not gonna lie. Thank you so much, Darian. Oh my God, let me know if you've read this because I know it's one that a lot of people have read. Okay, we've got a couple big packages. So I guess let's open one of them next. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. If I had a wig, I would throw it. Okay, so this package is from my grandparents. <laughs> so, oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, signed. Oh, we got a signed copy. First, we've got Watch Over Me by Nina LaCour. This is one that I have heard so many good things about recently. Like a lot of people read this and loved it. I didn't know it was so diddy. Like it's quite like a short hardback. I believe this is about a girl. I think she's like lived in care through a lot of her life and she gets a chance to go to this farm to like work there and it turns out it's haunted I think but you kind of don't know if it's actually haunted or if she's like imagining it. It gives me similar vibes I'm not sure if it's because the covers remind me of each other but it gives me similar vibes to Katrina Leno in that kind of like weird YA with beautiful covers. <laughs> I think this is a lot about grief and it's like a very touching story that has a lot of like, you don't know what is real and what isn't real kind of stuff to it. So really excited for this one. Thank you so much. Then we've got The Night Swim by Megan Golding, which I'm so excited to finally have my hands on. This is a thriller that focuses on like this woman who has a true crime podcast and she uses her true crime podcast to follow a ongoing rape trial that is happening. But then I think someone ends up contacting her about a murder that has happened in the same
same town and so you're following like the two cases and I think it has like a lot of courtroom stuff to do with the rape trial that's going on. I've heard that like the true crime podcast element of this is really great and that both stories are carried really well. This is like one of the thrillers I heard a ton about at the end of last year and just really wanted to get my hands on. It definitely seems like my kind of thriller. Like I feel like this is a thriller a lot of people have recommended to me so I'm so excited to finally have it. <laughs> What's the last one that they have sent me? Hello? Can I open? How do I get into this? <laughs> there we go. <gasps> oh, yay! Oh my god, that's so... <gasps> okay, so next we've got The Language of Thorns by Lee Bardugo. Isn't this gorgeous? It's so gorgeous. It's so gorgeous. <laughs> this is short stories from the Grishaverse, but oh my god, it's like illustrated on the inside. So every page has like these borders to it with these illustrations. I did not know that. <gasps> I'm in love with it. Oh my god, look at the big pages with the illustrations. I mean, look. This is. Look. This is lovely, isn't it? I Okay, I've only read Shadow and Bone. We've talked about this. I'm reading King of Crows and Crooked Kingdom soon. And hopefully I will get to this pretty soon as well. I'm like, I just want to make my way through the whole Grishaverse before the Netflix Shadow and Bone series comes out, which can we talk about all those pictures? Like, won't we all gag? Like, oh my God, I cannot take it. I just want to own everything by Lee Bardugo. And I'm really excited to read this. I feel like this will be great for like a readathon or something like that because it's short stories. So you can maybe read like a few every day and it's not very long either. But the illustrations in here are just like absolutely gorgeous. Like what is going on? How did I not know about these illustrations? I just could stare at this all day. Wow, thank you so much. I'm so excited to finally own this. Let's open. And another one. Ooh. This is from my aunt. And this is hashtag no escape, which is like a book in this series, but it's not a, like a, you don't have to read them in order, this series. I heard Emma from Drinking Wine My Shelf talk about this. This is a series called Murder Trending, which is murder stories told in really strange ways. So I believe this is like an escape room. Yeah, this is an escape room where, where contestants are getting killed off. Like, oh my God, I love escape rooms. I love them so much. Like it's so much fun. And so imagine doing an escape room, but if you get it wrong, out of time, you're killed off. Oh my God, ah, I'm so excited. This is disgusting. I like it though. Emma says these are like simple to read, but fun murder books. I don't know if they're murder mysteries necessarily. So as soon as I heard her talk about this series, I was like, well, I have to get it. <laughs> it sounds exactly like the kind of thing I would enjoy. Okay, what's in this one? <gasps> Yay, I'm so excited to have this. Oh, thank you, Lexi. This is from Lexi. This is The Radium Girls by Kate Moore. So this is nonfiction that I've wanted to own for so long. And it's about these women who worked in factories. And over time, they would find themselves with like really horrendous diseases and illnesses and ailments. It was the radium paint they were using was poisonous. So they'd been using for years and years, been painting without any kind of protection. And it's about them like fighting for justice and for their rights. And I think it's a series of interviews and diaries and letters. And this is just one I've just wanted for so long. Like I've wanted this for so long. I know it takes me ages to get around to nonfiction, but I am so excited to get to this. It sounds so interesting and a piece of history we don't hear enough about. What's in this one? Oh my God, I feel so happy. This is so lovely. <gasps> oh my God. <laughs> oh my God, Jesus Christ. Check out the bless me. <laughs> okay, so this is from Riley. She just sent me Snow White Learns of Witchcraft by Theodora Goss. Now we share a love, such a deep love for the Athena Club series. This is by Theodora Gross. This is like a series of short stories and poems. Oh yeah, eight short stories and 24 poems. And it's retellings of different fairy tales. So it says the Brothers Grimm, Hans Christian Andersen, Oscar Wilde. And it's recentering women 
and empowering them. This just sounds so good. Like the way that Theodorogos honors the women, like the historical women in the Athena club and gives them power and gives them agency. She just treats that so well, like reimagining Victorian literature with women at the center and women powered. So I just love her so much. <sighs> she is exquisite. I love her. I love her and I love her even more. I think she's incredible. Like one of my favorite authors, probably one of my favorite authors at this point, like up there, like every everything I read from her. Oh my God, don't get me. I'm already emotional about the Athena Club. Let's not talk about it. <laughs> Let's not talk about it yet. Thank you so much, Riley. I can't wait. I can't wait to read this. And again, it's quite short. So this is another one that would be great for a readathon. I feel like I'm trying to stack up on them at the moment. I want to take an interlude to open something that I know isn't a book. My mum sent this to me and she was like, you might want to just open it in the video where you unbox all your presents and then you can just cut it out if you, do <laughs> if you don't want to keep it in there. Oh my God, did I just cut my finger? No, we're good. So we're just going to see what this is. I have no idea. I don't, she said it's like something small. Actually, how do I, how am I supposed to get in? <gasps> <gasps> I'm so it's the Tea Dragon Society card game. Oh, it's so cute! This is the Tea Dragon Society card game inspired by the book by Kay O'Neill. Oh my god, wait. <laughs> so if you know me, you know I loved the Tea Dragon Society. I haven't read books two. Well, three isn't out yet. I haven't read book two yet. But this is a card game inspired by it. And look how cute the Tea Dragon... Oh my god, I'm not ready. Oh my god. Oh my god, it's loads of- I'll do a close-up. Oh my god, it's loads of cute, cute cards of the little tea dragons. Oh my god. Oh my god, it's so cute. Oh my god, that is so nice. Oh my god, I love it so much. I can't wait to play that. This is like the cutest creatures in the world and I love them. Oh my god, that's so cute. I love it so much. Oh my god, I'm so happy. Okay, back to the books now. <laughs> what is this? <gasps> yes! yes! This is another one I wanted. Oh my god, Jasmine! So this is from Jasmine. I'll leave her channel link down below. Oh my god, I'm so excited. Ah! Okay, so this is And the Trees Crept In by Dawn Kurtigich. I have heard really good things about this. I heard Kayla talk about this and it's about um, two sisters who arrive at their aunt's home to like live there, I think but the woods are like creeping in as the book goes, oh my God, ah. the woods are like creeping in closer as the book goes on. And it's kind of like horror and very strange, like a very weird book. And this is just one that I've been like eyeing up. This has been one of the books I've been most excited to get my hands on. And I am so thankful to finally own it. Like something about the cover, like you can't really see because of the ring light, but I really love it. And I just want something that's like dark, twisted, spooky, strange, all of the good things. So thank you so much, Jasmine. Oh my God, that's such a good one. Okay, next one. This is from Molly and this is Split Tooth by Tanya Tagak. If you ask me to tell you what this is about, I don't know. <laughs> I don't have an explanation for you and you may not get one. That's it. As far as I'm concerned, the issue is dead. I'm moving forward. Again, it's something that Kayla's spoken really highly about. It's a book that's told through many different forms. Like it's told a lot through poetry and then more prose sections. It's got illustrations. I know that the audiobook has throat singing in it because the author is a Canadian Inuit throat singer. It's a kind of semi-memoir, semi fiction about a girl growing up in this small community in the 1970s and I just heard that it's very very powerful so I'm gonna get or have I already got the audiobook I'm either gonna get or have already got the audiobook for this I think I've already got it super duper excited to get to this one. Oh, this is also from Molly okay thank you so much Molly this is The Luminous Dead by Caitlin Starling basically there's two characters so our main protagonist is having to like go on this expedition underground and it's like a really scary unknown situation and the only person 
person she has contact with is the person in her ear. And it's kind of like a relationship between them, but also you don't know whether you can trust that person in her ear. And it's a horror book. So like things just start going wrong and tension and unease starts building the deeper they go into this like cavern underground. I know Riley has spoken really highly about this. That's why I wanted to read it. But I'm trying to get into more horror this year along with romance. So this is one that I really think I'm gonna love. It seems really atmospheric. The horror that I love most is when it has this feeling of unease and like daunting throughout and when it sustains that. Like I think that's really hard to sustain, like that building. I just want my skin to be crawling by the end of it. So thank you so much, Molly. Can't wait to get to that one. This is another big package. Oh my goodness. Oh wow, okay. So these are all from my aunt as well. Firstly, we've got The Obelisk Gate by N.K. Jemisin. So this is the second in the fifth season. I'm so excited to own this. I cannot wait to get around to it. Like I, I can't wait. I just feel like I need to get back into this series straight away. Like I can't spend a year away <laughs> before I read the second one because I won't, I won't remember a single thing. Like I just won't. I won't remember a single thing. You are stupid. You're not I'm smart. Not stupid. You're not smart. This world is very difficult to describe, but it is kind of like this. The fifth season is happening in the first book where the world is ending. Like the world ends in seasons and humanity kind of goes and hides away and then regroups and comes back. We're following different characters as they navigate their way through this and this world where there's these origins who have power over like the earth and energy and they're very kind of shunted and discriminated against in society and so it's following that storyline it's so hard to describe and especially i think once you've finished the fifth season because of reasons that i can't explain it's very hard to describe the series like in retrospect without spoiling anything so i'm like gonna keep my mouth shut the book like it it made me feel so dumb. <laughs> it definitely is one of the more complex fantasy books out there. And so I feel like I need to read this book ASAP just to like retain all my knowledge of the series. So thank you so much for that, Debbie. Then we have also got Murder Trending. So a while back she bought me No Escape, but this is like the first book in the series. But again, you don't, I don't think you need to read them in chronological order of publication. I believe this is about the killings in this society are like live streamed. Like it's like a big form of entertainment through TV and internet. And I think like you can vote, you have like, <laughs> a lineup who's up for possibly being murdered and they like vote like the public vote on who they want to be killed and so it's kind of like hunger games vibes but again very like dystopian murder again i, I put this on my list because of emma and i'm so excited to get around to it and then beast jerk bloody eyes on these high quality goods we have got Grown by Tiffany G. Jackson. So I haven't actually read anything from Tiffany G. Jackson, but I feel like I am going to love it. This is about a girl who is like up and coming in the music industry. Her manager, kind of his body is found dead. It's whether she killed him. And I think it's a lot about the story of abuse in the media industry and being taken advantage of and how that feels. And just like a lot of conversations around abuse of power in the music industry, particularly towards young girls. So I've heard so many good things about this and I really want to get into all of Tiffany D. Jackson's stuff. It's like contemporaries that read like thrillers is what I've heard. Like Monday's Not Coming is another one I want to get into. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to own this and I love the cover of it so much. We've got one more Amazon parcel and then we've got a few from my mum and dad. Oh, okay. Who's this from? This is from Ramona. Thank you so much. Okay, we've got Big Little Lies by Leanne Moriarty. Now listen, this is like one of those classic thrillers. Like this is one of those thrillers that almost everyone has read. I have not. <laughs> I don't want to know too much about the plot because I feel like I've almost been spoilt about it at some point. But then I, I successfully blurred it out of my memory. <laughs> now. I don't remember that. Like, you know, sometimes you're spoiled. Like, there's some spoilers I know for like, Crooked Kingdom, I know spoilers. I, I can't forget them. But sometimes, sometimes I successfully forget spoilers. Like I, I managed to just get it out of my head. I feel like we start off knowing that someone's been murdered and then we go back in time to find out how that happened. But it's told in like this suburban kind of um, environment with all these like white women, suburban mums, and there's a murder, I think. That's what I wanna know. Don't tell me anything else about it because something could jog my memory and the spoiler could just come back. <laughs> okay, this is another one from my grandparents. <gasps> yes! 
Yes, oh my god, yay. Drowned Country by Emily Tesh. This is the sequel to Silver in the Wood. These are really short novellas. This cover, I don't know why, but it's one of my favorite covers in existence. Like, I just love how haunting and like mysterious it is. I really love it. Like, it just appeals to me so much. It's fashion meets, it's fashion. It's, excuse me, it's fashion. Wait, what is it, fashion? It's fashion. <laughs> So this is fantasy set around these woods and this man who's lived in the woods for hundreds of years. And I don't really want to say too much because I don't want to spoil anything. But in this, I think we're going to be following the two male characters that we followed a lot in the first book and their relationship. I love woodish fantasy, like woods, greenery, the woods being alive, like that kind of vibe, I think is not written enough. Like we need it more. Okay, we have three more from my parents. Oh yay, okay, so we have got The Stone Sky by N.K. Jemisin. So not much to say about this, but it is the third book in the fifth season trilogy. Don't wanna read the back, cause I feel like it will spoil the third one for me. So I don't wanna look at it. I'm very excited that I now own them so I can just like binge my way through the series, hopefully, she says. Will that happen? We don't know. <laughs> Ooh, okay. So this is the Honjin murders. Someone just mentioned this in my comments the other day and I was straight up like, okay, I'm adding this to my wish list. So this was written, I think in like the 1930s in Japanese. Oh no, I'm wrong, 19, I thought it was 1937. It seems like it's 1973. I'm sorry, I was wrong. I got the, the numbers around the wrong way. <laughs> this was written years and years and years ago, but I think it's only been translated recently. There's actually like 70 books in this series, but only two of them have been translated this is like a classic Japanese murder mystery, like detective, like kind of like a Kiparo kind of length of series. Like there's so many books, only two of them have been translated into English quite recently. But someone just recommended this to me and I ate it straight up. Like I definitely wanna read more translated works. A murder mystery Japanese detective story, yes please. Like doesn't that just sound like so much fun straight up? Oh my God, I'm so excited to get to that one. That's like, I'm surprised because I only just added that to my wish list. Okay, and then what's our last book? <gasps> yay! Oh my god, yay! Okay, so this is What Mama Left Me by Renee Watson. If you watch my channel a lot, you know that I love Renee Watson. I'm very excited for Love is a Revolution, her latest book coming out in a couple days, really. Oh, I should mention, Sabine has ordered that already for me as a birthday present. So I can't put it in this haul, but I know it's coming in like a week. Sabine has very kindly ordered that for me. I don't know too much about this. I believe this is middle grade. I could be making that completely up. Like I could, that could be in my head, but I feel like this is, maybe it's not middle grade. Is it middle grade? Um, who knows? Who knows, who knows, who knows? Renee Watson's writing is so powerful and really I feel like is one of the authors I've read that really captures like what it feels like to be a kid or a teenager and be going through difficult stuff. It really tackles race and gender um, and the intersection of them so well and social justice and social activism, it covers a lot as well. So I'm so excited to get to this. I really love Renee Watson's writing and I just wanna make my way through her entire backlist, which I think I'm not too far off doing now. I think maybe there's like one more book. So there we have it. That is all of my books. There's 20 books there. We got 21 things if you include the card game. I'm not even gonna try and pick them up because I know I'll drop them. But thank you so much. Oh my God, I feel so incredibly lucky. Um, these are all books I'm so excited for. And oh my God, I'm just so happy. Like this is so amazing. So thank you so much to any of you that did get me anything for my birthday. And just for all the support, like that is the greatest gift in the world. Like booktube has made me so happy and given me so much joy and I love it. Like I love doing it so much. And I just wanna thank you all for like, any comment, I love chatting with you. Like anytime you've chatted with me in a live stream, like anything, it means the world. Like it's so incredible. So thank you so, so much for everything. Thank you for all the books and thank you for all the birthday wishes. I'm gonna go. Thank you so much. Thank you for everything. I love you. Okay, bye.